Around three months ago, I made a video where we took a look at some teams that traded away young players too soon and ultimately had it come back to haunt them. In this video, we are going to be doing something similar, but instead looking at draft picks that teams traded away, which were then used to select superstar players. Now, I say this all the time before making these type of videos, whether it's a redraft or taking a look at some awful NHL trades, hindsight is always 2020, and it's easy to look back on things in the future and say that it was the wrong choice. However, it's still really really fun to do. If you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also huge shout out to Wagon Hockey for allowing me to use some of their clips as background footage. If you want to go check out their channel, which I definitely recommend, the link to that will be down below in the description. If you guys like watching highlights and want to get a glimpse at some potential future NHL stars, definitely go check them out. And now let's get into the video. Andre Vasilevsky is one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. He's been nominated for the Vesna Trophy in each of the past three seasons and actually won the award in 2019. At the age of just 26, Vasilevsky is already the winningest goaltender in Tampa Bay Lightning franchise history. I would say their 19th overall pick in the 2012 draft has turned out to be pretty good. Funny enough, this draft pick actually didn't belong to the Tampa Bay Lightning to begin with. They acquired it from the Detroit Red Wings along with defensive prospect Sebastian Piché in exchange for Kyle Quincy. As a Red Wings fan, this one definitely hurts. Even at the time this trade happened back in 2012, giving up a first round pick for a player like Quincy was a massive overpayment, and he really didn't do much at all throughout his tenure with Detroit. This is just one of the many examples of Ken Holland making a desperate move and trading away future assets in hopes to do whatever he can to keep the playoff streak alive. Tampa Bay, on the other hand, is still reaping the benefits of this trade, and who knows, if Detroit would have kept that pick, there is no guarantee at all that they would have used it to select Andre Vasilevsky. However, there is a very good chance that whatever prospect they took at that spot, if they had kept the draft pick, would have turned out to be more valuable than Kyle Quincy. The California Golden Seals were one of six expansion teams to join the NHL for the 1967-68 season, the others being the Philadelphia Flyers, the Los Angeles Kings, the St. Louis Blues, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and the Minnesota North Stars. When you compare them to those franchises I just mentioned, the Golden Seals were definitely a failed experiment, lasting all but nine seasons, and even though they did make the playoffs twice, never finished a season with anything close to a record of 500. Maybe if they had never made this trade, they would have had a lot more success. On June 10th of 1970, the Montreal Canadiens sent Ernie Hickey and their first round pick in that year's NHL draft, which wound up being used to select Chris Oddleafson, to the Golden Seals in exchange for Francis Lacombe, California's first round pick in the following draft, and some cash. After the Golden Seals finished with the worst record in the NHL in the 1970-71 season, that first round pick they traded wound up being pretty valuable, and the Montreal Canadiens used it to select Guy Lafleur with the first overall pick. Obviously, Guy Lafleur went on to have an incredible NHL career, racking up over 1,300 points, winning the Art Ross Trophy three times, and winning the Hart Trophy twice as league's MVP. On top of his amazing individual play, all of his awards and accolades, he is also one of the most decorated players in NHL history in terms of team success, winning five Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens from 1972 to 1979 including a Conn Smythe win as playoffs MVP in 1977. Just imagine if this trade had never happened and Guy Lafleur was taken first overall by the California Golden Seals. So many things could be different. Maybe Montreal would not have been such a dominant team throughout the 1970s. And I'm not saying Lafleur would have came in and saved the California franchise and they'd still be relevant today. However, I think things would have been a lot different. And earlier in the video, how I was saying there's no guarantee Detroit would have taken Andre Vasilevsky with the 19th pick had they kept it in the 2012 draft, it is almost guaranteed that the Golden Seals would have taken Lafleur number one overall if they had still had the pick. And if for some reason they decided to pass on Guy Lafleur and maybe go with the player who was drafted second overall, well, that was Marcel Dion and he also went on to have a pretty incredible career. 
former Oilers general manager Peter Shirelli made some pretty questionable moves throughout his tenure with the team, like trading away Taylor Hall in a one-for-one -one swap for Adam Larson, or signing Milan Lucic to that massive contract. But in my opinion, his worst move as Oilers GM very well may be trading away their 2015 first and second round picks for Griffin Reinhardt. And although Reinhardt was the fourth overall pick in the 2012 NHL draft, at the time this trade happened, he had already been showing signs of becoming a pretty big bust. And well, that is exactly what happened. Reinhardt hasn't played an NHL game since the 2015-16 season. And as I'm sure all you guys know by now, the New York Islanders used the first round pick they acquired in this trade to select Matthew Barzell 16th overall, who is now the face of their franchise and one of the brightest young stars in the NHL. Going back to the point I've already brought up multiple times in the video, yes, I am well aware there is no guarantee the Edmonton Oilers would have used this draft pick to select Matt Barzell. But when you go back and look at just how deep the 2015 draft was, there were still players on the board at the time like Thomas Shabbat, Kyle Connor, Brock Besser, and Travis Konechny. There is a very strong chance the Oilers would have drafted one of those players. Luckily, they didn't come up empty-handed from the 2015 draft as they obviously had the first overall pick and used it to select Connor McDavid, but could you imagine if they had kept this pick as well and came out of the 2015 draft with Connor McDavid and say a winger like Brock Besser or Kyle Connor? That would have been pretty insane. But hey, like I said, Peter Shirelli made some pretty questionable moves as Oilers general manager, and for fans of the Oilers' sake, I really hope Ken Holland doesn't do the same. After coming over to the NHL from the WHA for the 1977-78 season, Ron Graham had a great first year with the Boston Bruins, finishing with a 26-6-7 record and a 2.76 goals against average. However, that would be his only good season in the NHL. Luckily for the Bruins, they cashed in while his value was high, trading him to the LA Kings on October 9th of 1978 in exchange for the 8th overall pick in the 1979 NHL Draft. The Bruins used that draft pick to select Ray Bork, one of the greatest defensemen of all time. Five Norris trophies, as of right now, is first on the NHL's all-time points list by defensemen and will probably never be surpassed. It is pretty crazy that stemming from this one trade, the Boston Bruins got 21 and a half seasons of having one of the best defensemen in the entire NHL on their team, and while well, on the other hand, the LA Kings got a couple of seasons of very mediocre goaltending. If you want to know how Phil Kessel's time was in Toronto, you'll probably get a lot of different answers depending on who you ask. I'm sure some people will say it wasn't very good because of the lack of team success, and other people will say it was great because he put up really good individual numbers. Me personally, I like to give Phil Kessel the benefit of the doubt when it comes to this. I think he was a fantastic player throughout his tenure in Toronto, and let's not pretend the Leafs put a team around him that could compete year in and year out. However, I do think the Leafs probably would have been better off never trading for Phil Kessel to begin with and keeping their first round picks, one of which turned out to be Tyler Sagan, who the Bruins took second overall in 2010, the other being Dougie Hamilton, who they took ninth overall in 2011. Obviously Sagan and Hamilton didn't play all that long in Boston, but have both went on to have fantastic careers elsewhere. Tyler Sagan with Dallas, and I mean you look at Dougie Hamilton now with the Hurricanes, he's one of the best defensemen in the NHL. I feel like this trade is looked back on a lot, and it's for good reason, because things for the entire NHL could have just been so different had it just never happened. Finishing off the video, we have another trade involving the Leafs. This one turned out a lot worse for them than the one we just talked about. On October 16th of 1989, the Toronto Maple Leafs traded their 1991 first round pick to the New Jersey Devils in exchange for defenseman Tom Curvers. Trading away a first round pick a couple of years in advance is really risky because you just don't know what the team could look like then. And although Tom Curvers did have a solid first season in Toronto, putting up 52 points in 70 games, the following season, he lasted all but 19 games before the Leafs then traded him to the Canucks. Toronto kind of bottomed out after that, and then the first round pick they traded away became all that much more valuable. The New Jersey Devils used it to select future Hall of Famer Scott Niedermeyer with the third overall pick in the 1991 NHL Draft. Over 700 career points, four Stanley Cups, three with the Devils and one with the Ducks. He actually won the Conn Smythe as playoffs MVP in 2007 with Anaheim. He also won the Norris Trophy in 2004 as league's best defenseman. You guys get the point, he obviously had an incredible career. And it's pretty crazy that the New Jersey Devils wound up getting a player like that in exchange for Tom Curvers who 
really just bounced around the league a lot after the trade and was out of the NHL by 1995. That is going to wrap up today's video, I really hope you guys did enjoy. There were tons of other examples of traded draft picks turning into superstar players, so feel free to chat about some other ones I didn't talk about in this video down in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure to go down there and drop a like on it, that is the best way to share your support. And as always, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys all in the next video.